has been a lot of excitement about this guy. This is the Volvo EX30. It is the first of its model. It is a compact, all electric SUV. It's Volvo, so it has beautiful modern design. It has a lot of luxuries. There's a lot of innovation, and that's not even what's most interesting about this car. I have a lot to tell you. Volvo has rethought everything about this car, not only electric driving, and not only design, but how we use our cars, what we need, and what the most efficient and relaxing and zen function is in a car. It starts with this. You get a key that's a card. It's a, just a like a hotel room key or something like that. It says Volvo. And that's just the start of what's so interesting about this car. Come here, let me show you. But what you'll do is you'll put your card key right here on the side of the door and that unlocks the car. If you have your phone as key and you walk up to the car, you don't even have to do that. It will just unlock. You hop in and away you go. Come on in, I wanna show you around the inside of the EX30. The new design language of Volvo is what you see when you sit in this car. So it starts with the steering wheel that's flat on the top and bottom, and that's to give you more visibility. Without a steering wheel that loops up into your view, you actually have a much wider view of the road, which is fantastic. You also don't have a driver information screen here, which I also really like because that takes that distraction away from you. Now, in other Volvo models, you'll have a head-up display. Volvo decided not to put that in the EX30 to keep the cost and the carbon footprint down. But in other cars, especially the three-row SUV EX90, it will have a head-up display and you'll need that because with that many people and that large of a vehicle, you will need that information. So we don't have a driver information screen here. Everything that you need is over here on this vertical touch screen. So it's set up to give you your car information here. I can see my battery charge. I can see the gear that I'm in. I can see safety systems that are at work. I have my map here. Then I've got music. I've got my apps here. And then I've got my toolbar. So if you think about your typical computer or tablet, you always have a toolbar. This is my toolbar. In driving this car, I found this was super easy to figure out, to function. Here's my climate. I can pick out my vehicle settings here. If I need something, there's my one pedal drive. I want that on for most efficiency. Even functions that we're used to having a button for and something at our fingertips is going to be here, including the side view mirrors. So this will guide you how to set the side view mirrors. And I have to say, it seems like quite a few steps when you're used to just having a button on the door panel, and it's not. I was able to do it actually while I was driving in traffic and get everything set exactly how I needed it. If I need to make a quick adjustment, if I maybe wanted to raise my seat up a little bit and adjust my mirrors, it was really easy to do while I was on the go. There are other functions here as well that you'll find around the vehicle. There's your inter interior lighting, the lift gate, uh, and ambient lighting. We actually have ambient lighting panels here underneath the dashboard and in strategic places around the cabin and you can actually change that for uh, the kind of look and feel that makes your Volvo EX30 a little bit of a luxury pod. A very new approach that Volvo took to the EX30 that we're going to see in all of their cars in the future is the materials that they choose and how they use them. They've gone for sustainable, recyclable, renewable materials. Look at this dashboard here. This has this sort of hashed look to it. This is not, it, it's a hard surface, but it's actually made from linen. It's made from flax. We spent some time with the designer to talk about the interior, and here's what she told us. So this is Camille Oldra. I kind of said it right. And she is responsible for color and trim. So everything that you see inside the car that's tactile, that you touch, that's soft, the harder surfaces, anything that's not electronics, that's her job. And she's going to show us what she loves about the Volvo EX30. Hi, Camille. Hi. So show us what your display is here. You said, you told me that this is your favorite of all the different uh, seating groups or color groups. Why is this one your favorite? So this room, this interior is called Pine Room. We call it Pine because we wanted the customer to really feel like a walk in the forest. So throughout 
very Scandinavian expression, very Scandinavian um, design. We expressed our wool blend materials, which is really our Volvo DNA materials, in combination with our Nordico uh, material here, which is featuring pine resin from Finland and Sweden. So we have this... In the material, material there's pine resin? Exactly. So it's, it's um, having renewable resources. And then here, the wool is, of course, 30% wool, natural material again, but 70% is recycled polyester. So we have really combined this sustainable upholstery here with nice contrast, strong character, beautiful expression, and attention to detail. I'm actually matching today the colorful detail here, pale yellow. So this is a pale yellow, and yes. what, is, what is this material made of? This is a recycled polyester. That is recycled polyester as well. Absolutely. Wow. And it was a really smart, tiny detail to find a way to just finish the piping and still give a little character. So wow. this really beautiful, rich upholstery it's, it's gorgeous. actually my favorite. So you have a little uh, demonstration yes. over here. Show us what this is. What's in so, this little kit? So these are uh, material boxes uh, showing the different rooms, the content of the room. So you can recognize here the upholstery uh, that having like the, the wool blend. This is recycled polyester and that's our Nordico that I just described. And then in combination in this room, you have a nice decor material that is made of linen. So the, we call it flax. Um, so it's, uh, it's a very interesting fibers because it grows in between the food cultures. It uses very less water. So it's quite convenient to, to use. It's lightweight. Uh, and so you can see the fibers. Then you, you just collect them. And out of that, we really made a nice textile. And that's what we have used for our decor. And you have a super nice tactile feeling. As is giving and this is flax. This is flax. So this might be like, you would see flax in a fabric store. You might see it in a, a clothing store, Absolutely. a dress shop. Absolutely. And people use flax to make fabrics that we wear. Exactly. And now you're using this for fabrics that will cover your seat and in your car. And really then this giving. is not the seat. This is for the dashboard. Yes, Correct. so you have it on the, under the dashboard, on the decor area, and also it follows on the door. So you really have this horizon in front of you, giving you this really light Scandinavian feeling when you're sitting in your car. So how long have you been designing automotive interiors? Uh, it's about five years. I'm working at Volvo. And, and why did you decide you wanted to work in automotive? I started as a textile designer, uh, as uh, studying textile design. And then uh, a company came to, to uh, explain what was automotive industry. And I just felt like I connected with the process, the method in the design. And then I just jumped onto the opportunity and I studied more transportation design. And I'm still here. I like it. Are you home? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for showing Thank us your designs. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. So why is Pine your favorite? It's my favorite because it has a lot of character, a lot of details on the, on the seat, but also on the, the other part of the room, you have the air vent really having some contrast. It plays with natural light going inside. So, and it looks very different from what you see in other cars. Um, so I think when you, when you sit inside this interior, everything is so peaceful, very makes you calm. You're just ready for a long drive and everything will be fine. So let me ask you this. Um, do you prefer seats that are covered partially in the synthetic leather and, and the wool, or do you prefer all wool? I think the combination of easy to clean material like this mm -hmm. and also rich material on the backrest upholstery makes a very, it has a lot of character, but it's also very comfort comfortable, very practical. I mean, all qualities. And easy to clean. We like exactly. that. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. The new approach to the design also you'll see here. So we have this very soft touch 
plastic. It's made from some plastics. Uh, dashboard here it has almost like a velvety texture to it. Then I want you to look down here. There's a bay here where you can put your phone and it will charge wirelessly and you can leave your key down there or you can just store your phones. You don't have to, to charge them because you can do this. You can actually charge your phone using the USB port, which is right here. There's a false floor here. And I think of this as like a very Apple-esque detail. You can plug in your phone, you can leave the cord there, you can put the floor here, and then you'll hide the cord and see the phone. That is such an Apple detail. I love that so much. It's very elegant and it keeps your phone where it is, needs to be charged, connected to Apple CarPlay, but I don't have that wire winding around the cabin of the car. It's very elegant. If you wanted to store some things in this area, this is really nice too. It's got a lip here on either side, so it's perfect for a small handbag, a makeup bag, something like that. You could even put quite a large uh, crossbody or, or a small backpack in this space and it'll fit quite nicely. Now let's talk about these seats. So this particular uh, interior trim it has wool, these are wool blend seats. They're actually made with 30% wool and then they have uh, the balance is made with polyester, with reclaimed plastics. And it is beautiful. You would never know that it's anything but wool. If you like cloth seats, this is the thing to have. I personally prefer the leatherette that Volvo uses, that's leatherette and reclaimed plastics. Let me show you what that looks like. We've had a lot of fun driving around in the Volvo EX30 today through Barcelona. We were driving the ultimate luxury edition, the top of the line. It has the dual motor. It has all wheel drive. That is not the $35,000 version that is so attractive to so many people looking for an affordable electric car. So what do you get in the affordable $35,000 version? Well, this is it. And I have to say, I love this blue color. I love the, I like this interior better. If I were specking even the luxury edition, I would, you, I would get this interior. I like it much better than the one in the luxury edition. So let me show you what you get for $35,000 in the Volvo EX30. I hope you can kind of see this blue color. It looks almost white. It's so light, but out in the daylight, it really does look like a cloud blue color, like a very pale blue sky. Inside, there are these materials. So we have these air vents. I love these air vents. This is so simple. It might be my favorite detail in this car. You just have, you just regulate the air direction here and you can turn it on or turn it off. That's off and that's on by raising or lowering this little tab. It's so elegant. I also really like this dashboard. Now this might be a personal preference and there are other options for the dashboard. This is made from a composite material uh, with recycled window frames. So they actually take the window frames and turn them into these little sparkly details and that is the material that they used for the dashboard and for the door panels. The door handles are super elegant. They're just really easy to use. You just pull the door, you just pull, and that opens the door. So it is analog, it's not electric, and that's just fine. The floating, uh, the floating armrest here is really elegant, I love that. I also love this, this um, mimic blue color. So the blue color is continued here in the door panels, and then also here underneath the storage floor. This was one of my favorite features in this car too. You can pop your phone down there or a bag or anything. And then you've got this false floor. So you've got a little extra storage, very elegant. And then that blue color is continued here inside the cup holder. So you can even see it's got little coffee cups there. And you can actually move these out of the way and you can even take this out if you need to take it out to clean it it comes right out i lo love the utility of all of these details just just the little things it is the little things isn't it one of my favorite features though is these seats this upholstery so these seats are made from this breeze they call the colors called breeze but it's sort of a pale blue leatherette and then it has these woven inserts so this also is a recycled or reclaimed um, 
materials, plastic materials, like a polyester, but it is woven, so it has this almost sort of um, metric or pixel look to it. It's very elegant, very pretty, and I love the color. I love leatherette, and I love the color, and I love the treatment inside the cabin of the Volvo EX30. Another detail that's been reinterpreted are the window controls. So rather than having window controls here on the door, we have them here. So I can push this button and down goes my window. I can tap this little button for the rear window and the rear window goes down. So it's all right here at your fingertips. I would call this a learning curve. Uh, it's not the most intuitive thing, but once you figure it out, it will become second nature. I really do like that. And then this is also where you'll find the door locks. They're right here on the center armrest. This is not a console. There's not storage in here, so it's not going to open and give you storage, but you do have your cup holders there. Speaking of storage, uh, I was wondering, where is the glove box? There's not a glove box here. So there's actually components in here. Volvo decided to add the glove box right here. There's a button for it, and there it is. So here's the glove box. I can have my keep my screen cleaning cloth right there and other key information that I need right there in this nice little panel underneath the uh, touch screen. Let's go look at the rear seat and see what rear seat passengers get. Volvo takes a lot of pride in the fact that the EX30, even though it's compact, is very spacious. And we have this nice back seat that is actually pretty good. This seat is set for my driving position and I do have barely enough leg room to sit comfortably and uh, if you're going to put child passenger car seats in here it might be a little tight definitely better for forward facing car seats or booster seats rather than rear facing it is a compact suv after all but rear seat passengers are going to be very comfortable it starts with uh, we have usb ports and window controls right here there is this, I love this detail, this clever little bin right here that pulls out so you can put some things in there. And I want you to notice all of the design here. Volvo took sort of a whimsical approach in making this a fun little, uh, fun little design here on this bin. And this bin is a solid piece. So if something gets dirty or mucky in there, you can actually just take it out and clean it. You don't have to worry about trying to clean it inside the car. The design of the seats continues here. You'll notice it has completely covered in this beautiful wool. There's a really nice pocket that's lined with this lovely yellow material. And there's a perfect spot right here for a phone. So you can just drop your phone right in there. If you are going to install a child passenger car seat, the latches are here. They're actually covered by this wool panel. So, uh, and if, it's, if you have the leatherette, it'll be covered by leatherette panel. Underneath here are the latches. They're very easy to access. And if you don't need them, they hide away very neatly. I like that detail too. The last thing the passengers are gonna love is this panoramic sunroof. So it's a fixed pane, it doesn't open, but it is beautiful. It makes the whole cabin feel so much more open, so much air more airy. And for rear seat passengers, it does feel, you, you lose that feel of being in a compact SUV. You just are in a lovely luxury pod with your friends. Yes, it's compact, but there's a lot of cargo space. And there's a little bit of a surprise in here too. So there's a little button there to open the cargo area. And look at how deep this is. This is a really deep cargo well, and there's actually even more storage space underneath. So you've got room for a cord, for a charge cord. You've got room for uh, anything that you need. And I like that it has this large lip here, which means if you put things in here and you open the lift gate, they're not gonna roll out on you. The seats will fold flat, so you get extra cargo space if you need it. That's key in a compact SUV. So you get your choice, cargo or passengers or a little of both. The Volvo EX30 has a really nice rear view camera, but it also has a 360 degree camera view on the top trim. So as I put the car in reverse, I can see what's behind me. But then as I start my drive, I can also see what's in front of me, if that's something that's important. So you're able to see here on the camera, cars that are driving ahead of me that might not be available right in my, in my direct view. It's nice to be able to see that also for parking. It's a great feature. 
Once we get started on the road, though, the camera view reverts to the map view, which I can see if I really need to see it. I do have my driving directions on so I can hear the navigation turn by turn and I don't have to look at the screen. One great feature for driving in the city is one pedal driving. You get that by touching the car icon here on the screen and that allows you to turn on or off one pedal driving. One pedal driving is a great feature for the city. I found it less enticing on the highway. It's not super powerful on the highway, but in the city, you can actually come to a complete stop. If you're not driving really fast, you just lift your foot off the accelerator and you come to a full stop. This was really great for city driving. You'll notice too, that in front of me, there's no driver information screen. There's a little screen that has a driver monitor camera and it will let me me know if I'm looking away from the road for too long. And that's really for the hands-free highway driving feature as well to make sure that the driver is not doing anything unsafe or irresponsible. But the lack of a driver information screen here in front of the driver is great because it actually reduces distraction. Using the Hey Google Voice Assist, using the voice prompts on navigation, and also just being in tune with what's going on around me is really all I need for safe driving. So I appreciate not having that driver information screen. It really takes away a lot of the distractions that we don't even realize are in front of us as we drive. Well, I lost the audio on this particular video clip, but I wanted to show you this. And that is the panoramic sunroof that's available on the top two trims of the Volvo EX30. It's a fixed pane panoramic sunroof, meaning you can't open it. And it's covered with a UV coating that's designed to keep the ultra violet rays out that will heat up the cabin of the car. I really, really like this a lot. We actually drove through some very cloudy, windy weather and the cabin felt open, it felt airy. And for such a small, compact SUV, that is really necessary if you're going to have rear seat passengers so that no one feels claustrophobic. And honestly, driving through Spain, I had a much richer experience being able to look up and see the trees, see the buildings, and then when the sun came out, being able to see the sun. This is Glenn Tao from Volvo, and he's gonna show us the battery pack that's under the car. Volvo has this really nice display here and Glenn's going to show us what this is, what it does, and what you need to know about the battery pack in an electric car. Nice to meet you, Glenn. Oh, nice to meet you. So tell us what we have here in this uh, stripped down version of the Volvo X, uh, EX30. Yeah, this is the, the platform and chassis of EX30. What you see in the middle is a 69 kilowatt battery, an NFC battery. And what we have seen here is that in the rear is a 200 kilowatt single motor, the rear motor, and it gives you about 272 horsepower. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, here is the inverter controlled motor. And you can see also the bus and the green line is actually the cooling line and the orange line is the high voltage. The high uh, voltage. High and voltage so I'm sorry, on. the green line is what? Uh, the blue line the is blue the cooling pack. Cooling, okay. Mm. And so that keeps the battery from overheating? Yes, of course. And we have a battery control technology that uh, control the temperature of the battery. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and uh, also to heat it up and so that it works in the right temperature of the battery. In the, in the front, you see the inverter, the controller of the whole system, and a heat pump that we have mm -hmm. here. Yeah, gives you a better uh, climate performance in the winter time so that you lose less energy. It's a better energy efficiency solution. So why do you want, why is it better to stack the batteries here underneath the, uh, essentially underneath the cabin of the car, rather than putting them in where we might have put the engine before in the front? I think this is a way to utilize the space of the car. And uh, since we are building an SUV, um, then uh, it helps to build in the height of the car and also it gives you the weight in the center of the car gives you a better design of the chassis that uh, so that we can uh, design the chassis to have a better performance that you have experience in the driving today uh-huh and so the battery size 69 kilowatt hours how many miles will you get out of a 69 kilowatt 
our battery pack. Uh, we haven't done the certification yet, but our estimation is that with this single motor version, we will get to uh, 275 EPA miles. Uh -huh. And with the twin motor, we are estimating roughly around the 265 miles. Uh -huh. That's the miles that we will get in the US market. And if you were to put more batteries, so increase that 69 number to say 72 or 98 or something like that, could you do that here? I don't think we offer that from the platform. You see that the size of the battery is pretty packed. Mm -hmm. And uh, since we're making it for a smaller car, this helps us to build this uh, small and mighty X30 so that we keep, uh, we keep it fit to the vehicle itself mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so you, you have a rear motor and we have a front motor. What else is over here? I see the 12 volt battery that we would use to, uh, what's the role of that 12 volt battery? We still have a low voltage control system in the car that needs 12 volts for different things like you have the seat control and the doors that is normally need a low voltage. Uh -huh. And so we have two uh, voltage system. The battery is 400 volt, is high uh, voltage. And then uh, the 12 battery, uh, 12 volt battery provides you the low voltage on the other system that you need. Okay, so the 12 volt might turn on the interior lights. Yes, all the different things with interiors, with the seats, with controlling the windows, controlling the locks, gotcha. all different things like that. So if I have a gas car, gas powered car, and my battery's dead. Can I jumpstart that car using this car and that battery? I think so. Yes. Yeah. You can. Yeah. yeah. Because mm -hmm. the same battery you can use. Same battery. So you sh you should be able yeah. to do yeah. that. Okay. And it, does this? So in a in a gas powered car, the twelve volt battery is recharged, correct, yeah. by the gas engine. How does this battery recharge? We have a DC DC system that converts the high voltage power into low voltage power so that we always keep the 12 volt battery charged. So basically this large battery is recharging the small battery. Exactly. But it needs its own system. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty cool. What else do we see over here? What else you see is the front suspension, the rear suspension. Mm -hmm. uh, but for that, if you want to know more about the chassis, I would recommend to talk to our chassis expert. Okay. That he will bring you through the, on the details and chassis technology that we have in this car. Okay. All right, Glenn, thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Volvo EX30 is the perfect platform for not only the future of electric driving, but the future of Volvo. The design is beautiful, the user experience is innovative, and then this little car gives you the choice of a single or a dual motor, a lot of power or even more power, and a really solid range of all electric driving. It charges quickly, up to 80% in less than 20, less than 30 minutes, and overnight at a level two charging station. It's priced with a lot of luxuries at the opening base price of about $35,000. You can go all in at about $46,000 and still have a really affordable, lovely to drive, luxury filled, electric compact SUV. The only way they can improve this car is by adding a third row. That's the EX90, and we can't wait to drive that one.